In this video, we'll talk about nuclear import and export in details. Stay tuned till the end. The context, the concept, everything would be cleared. So what molecules need to be transported across the nucleus? That means what molecules are about to be get in the nucleus or what molecules are to be exported to the nucleus? Let's see that. So there are transcription factors which are encoded by the genome but produced in the cytosol on the uh, ribosomes, right? So they have to be brought into the nucleus in order for them to do transcription. That requires nuclear import. Imagine there is a DNA break and this DNA break has to be repaired. So the repair machinery need to first get into the nucleus. In order to do that, nuclear import is important. Let's take talk about another scenario. So let's say there is a mRNA and it has to go out in order for it to be translated. So that is why mRNA has to be exported. So thereby many biomolecules has to be imported and exported across the nuclear envelope. And that happens via specific pore known as nuclear pore complex that you can see in red. Now there are specific signal sequences known as nuclear localization sequence which is depicted in blue and there are proteins known as importing which are basically the import receptors. So the first step is importing binding to the nuclear localization signal and the protein that need to be transported inside. Then the important interacts with the nuclear pore and eventually gets into the cytosol. So the importing plays a key role in the import process. Now once the importing bound uh, protein gets inside the nucleus then RAN GTP binds to importing. RAN is again a monomeric G protein very similar to RAS, RAB etc. So RAN GTP lead to a dissociation of these protein complex and RAN bound GTP is eventually exported out of the nucleus. So it moves out into the cytosol. Now inside the cytosol there are specific proteins known as GTPase activator protein or GAPs. So GAP hydrolyze the GTP on RAN and ultimately makes RAN GDP. RAN GTP is inactive in terms of functionality. So RAN GDP is not required in the cytosol. Eventually, there are proteins known as NTF2, which are also a category of importins only. So they are import receptors. They bring the RAN GDP inside the nucleus. Now, RAN is functional only in GTP bound state. So that is why RAN GDP would be exchanging GTP with the help of the molecule known as GIF or guanosine nucleotide exchange factor. GIF exchanges the GTP instead of GDP. Now the RAN is active. RAN can again bind to another importing and cargo protein complex. So this is how what we saw in overall that there is gap proteins which are only cytoplasmic and there are GIF proteins which are only nuclear. And that sort of maintains a very high level of RAN GDP onto the cytoplasmic site and high level of RAN GTP onto the nuclear in the nuclear uh, site. And that literally help in the transport process. So this is known as basically the RAN cycle. RAN GTP is more inside, RAN GDP is more outside the nucleus and the gap and GIF make sure that they are in this particular opposing gradient. So now let's talk about the overall process quickly summarize. So first of all, the formation of importing and cargo complex is the key event in the import process. Eventually it binds to the nuclear pore and the transport happens across the nuclear pore. Inside the nucleus, there are RAN GTP. So RAN GTP binding to importing complex releases the cargo protein. And this cargo protein can now do its job, maybe doing transcription or any other nuclear maintenance job. Then eventually the export of the importing and the RAN GTP complex happens. 
in the cytosolic side, gap protein binds and GTP gets converted into GDP. So the RAN GTP is now dissociated from these importing complex. Now, once RAN GDP is there, it again get back transported into the nucleus. So now we understand the process of nuclear import in details. Now let's talk about the export quickly. So just like there are import signals, there are also export signals. So these export signals bind to exporting kind of molecules and also RAN GTP binds. Now RAN GTP, previously we see that RAN GTP dissociates the protein which are coming from outside to inside. But in this case, RAN GTP bound exporting complex is totally transported out of the uh, nucleus to the cytoplasm through this nuclear pore complex. Now what happens is the RAN GTP eventually gets dissociated on the cytoplasmic side, exporting complex is free, eventually exporting complex is brought back inside the nucleus for a new round of export. Now this regulated nuclear import and export is super important for proper transcriptional regulation, proper nucleosome remodeling or proper um, repair mechanisms. Uh, let me tell you how. So basically, let's take an example of coordination of nuclear export and import. So imagine a transcription factor. It's possible that it's always there in the nucleus after it is synthesized, or it is also possible that it needs to be present into the nucleus for a specific duration of the time. And in this duration, it would do the transcription. And eventually, it has to go outside of the cytoplasm. So by shuttling in and out, it is ensured that the transcription organized by this particular transcription factor is very much time restricted, restricted to a particular time window. And that is that might be useful for a precision or timed uh, regulation of transcription. This kind of example can be seen in activated T cells. In activated T cells, in calcium dependent manner, specific transcription factor known as NFAT gets into the T cell nucleus. So NFAT is generally phosphorylated and its nuclear import signal is masked. This, phosphoryl, this phosphor, uh, phosphate groups are actually removed by a calcium dependent phosphatase, calcineurin. So when calcium level is high outside the nucleus, calcineurin acts and it kind of make a complex, it masks the export signal and it exposes the import signal which is shown here in red. Now, which is the, now this particular NFAT protein would bind to importance and would get in, though it's not shown here. But anyway, the import signal help in that nuclear import. Now inside the nucleus, the NFAT protein would be now released, it can do its transcription. But eventually, when the calcium level is low in the nucleus, these, there are kinases that can phosphorylate because the calcineurin activate activity is low in the nucleus because calcium is low. So it, it, it can no more stay in a dephosphorylated state. It's now again phosphorylated that exposes the export signal. Now once the export signal is exposed, exporting protein would bind here and take it outside the nucleus. So all, so from this cycle, what we can see that the export and import of NFAT transcription factor in activated T cell is highly regulated. And that literally regulates the uh, expression of several genes in these activated T cells. Now we understand and we can appreciate the process and the coordination between nuclear import and export. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook and Instagram page. All the links are provided in the description. If you want to practice more questions, all the link of the course are provided in the description as well. So please help our channel using super thanks. So see you in next video.